Trio Stories, uh, welcome to the first episode. Uh, nice to have you along. I would say first episode of what, but I've not decided yet. So uh, why don't you start by uh, telling everyone about you guys, uh, how you know each other and uh, how did you get into doing YouTube? Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Tim, for inviting us. It's, uh, it's honestly so nice to, to be here and, and, and to chat to you. Uh, I'll let Sal talk about how we've met and, and the, the history. I, you know, I don't have such a great memory, so <laughs> I don't want to make any errors there. So No, so, um, yeah, it's quite simple. We just met at school um, and became very close friends and then became more than close friends. <laughs> and we sort of went to university together and did the whole relationship thing <laughs> and then we discovered this like out creative outlet together and started our photo and video journey together I mean you already had photography yeah before yeah. I came along I think we were both fairly creative people I, I, I don't always see myself as that creative a person but I always looked for um, kind of cool projects to get involved with things to do outside of the box and Sal has always been maybe a little bit more creative in the traditional sense, like she's been quite into design, drawing, fashion, Arty. the arts kind of thing. Um, and yeah, we, we we just found that in photo and video, it was kind of like a, a common ground where we both uh, um, just really found kind of something that we loved, something that we could do, do toge together. Yeah, do yeah. together. And yeah, that's how Trio started really. The actual kind of commercial side of it, well, com I say commercial, like the official company foundation was basically um, just at the end of university or, or as we were coming towards the end of uni and we, you know, we thought, well, can we make a living out of this? We, we didn't want to go into the traditional sort of nine till five jobs and uh, the rest is history. Yeah. Awesome. So if you guys can get like a really big following, you've got the perfect childhood sweetheart movie moment already mapped out so that this you've got that small step to go of of making a, a massive channel and becoming super famous um the, the rest of the work's already done i guess yeah <laughs> yeah i guess yeah, we hope e so yeah easy <laughs> as simple as that <laughs> cool so um what got you to take the step into thinking okay well let's let's take a youtube channel more seriously and let's actually try and build something um, a value. I mean, what what's the value to you, and what what got you sort of moving in that direction? Me. Yeah, go on. Okay. Um, so yeah, we started our company as Trio Stories together. Um, I don't even know how long ago. A few years ago. Just just Five, under three. No, I three, think three, 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 three or four years ago. Yeah, and it just ramped up so quickly like the business was flowing really well and we just loved it and it was so natural to us and then last year in particular just went nuts yeah it was absolutely crazy we traveled the world basically all year with trio and with our work um managed to go to california morocco the Caribbean. The Caribbean, like all over Europe, we were basically never at home. And it was just surreal that we got to do this. Um, and we were kind of like, wow, wish we had a YouTube <laughs> to show people what we were doing because this is, this is really cool and we want to share that with people. Um, so then we kind of said, right, well, when 2020 comes around, new year, new us. Yeah, it was one of those things like, oh, you know, <laughs> Is going to be a fresh start with a with a, with a brand new year, so uh, it'll make sense to start the YouTube then, kind of following on from a, a really busy and kind of successful year for us, which 2019 was. So yeah, we did that. We made our first video announcing that we were going to start our YouTube, and we've done zero travel since. <laughs> 20, 2020 hit us like an absolute truck, and uh, we kind of had to change things up and and adjust and adapt and. We've been making content that we didn't originally anticipate making like quite a lot of our usual quite um photography videography related like tutorials and stuff we never really anticipated making that so much we thought maybe like here and there we'd do a bit but we thought more so it was going to be about videography and photography whilst traveling and actually like yeah some cinematic stuff and um some vlogs and things but then yeah we just had to completely 
Readjust. Readjust, and yeah, it's what the channel is now. Amazing. Um, so, talk about your channel. Um, maybe let's talk about some of the videos. And I think the most interesting videos on a channel are the ones that people have watched the most and the least. And there can often be some real runaway hits and some uh, real shockers that you look at and kind of go, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with this video. It's great. Um, so, maybe start with the the biggest disappointment which which video of yours is the smallest that you consider part you know, since you've properly got rolling um and yeah what what was the original idea um what went into the making of it and what do you think sort of led it to led it to uh fall short so i'll let you go yeah i'll kind of uh talk through this one because it's kind of relating to a big passion of mine uh, which is football so it seems like for some reason any football content that we create just flops. Um, now, we have a few theories about this, and really, so far, there's kind of two videos that have really confirmed this theory, and one that kind of did, because we thought, I mean, the behind the scenes of uh, a football videographer, we, we were really pleased with that video, and as much as it, it did kind of pretty well at the time, um, it's pretty much dead now, and it's, it's kind of sitting at 500-ish views. Um, but the other two, I mean... I mean, one's quite, like, we've only put it out, like, a couple of weeks ago, so... Yeah. I mean, not even a couple of weeks ago, like, a week ago, so... So it's on about 160 views. 180-something, but yeah, so we don't really know how that's going to pan out, but looking at, sort of, the Common stats, factor, it yeah. kind of seems like it will behave in the exact same way as our last one, which is, is our, like, sort of biggest flop, which is, was... Um, how to film a football commercial or, like, a kit reveal in 24 hours. Yeah. So, yeah, we are kind of wondering whether a big part of this is is about kind of knowing your audience and maybe this is kind of shown that we haven't taken the time to to know our audience. So we're aware that now like over 50% or about 50% of all of our viewership comes from... I think more. Even more. Yeah. Um, comes from the United States. Uh, well, for a start... Football is a very different thing over in the States. And secondly, it turns out they don't really know much about football, follow it, or kind of really see it as that valid a sport. It, soccer for, for, for the States. Comparatively to, to, like, to the, the to UK Europe and, and Europe. Yeah. But, like, even just with the majority of our viewing being American, even just having it in the title, like, football commercial or football yeah. um, advert... Like, it's not going to do as well as potentially, like, the using the word soccer, but then we are English and European, so we're not going to use the word soccer. Yeah, I would never use a swear <laughs> word like that in, in our title. Um, but, yeah, so th these are, seem to be kind of the, the, the weakest videos, and, and one of the reasons that we think is because um, the content just wasn't appropriate for the viewership, basically. Cool. I, mean, I guess that makes a lot of sense, but it's got to be annoying that something can, that that small about the the subject matter can make such such a difference um so we talked about the to the, the the worst but i mean what about the best you've i've you know obviously watched your videos and um you've got some real bangers on there um any sort of insight for, that comes from turning out videos that have got you know, quite a lot of thousand views yeah so our first big success was the moment invitational film festival submission which was how to survive a pandemic um i think for obvious reasons this did quite well initially um even out of sort of like the filmmaking scene because obviously it was just really relevant yeah it got, it, it got a bit of virality on like our social media our personal social media and i think that when you get um current topics added with humour, I think that is recipe. definitely a recipe for a video that's going to do well. Uh, you know, if you can address a, 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 an issue that is very, very kind of, you know, topical, topical and, and up to date and add a bit of humour into it, that's kind of viral source right there. Yeah, so that did really well for us. And then it, it just, it grew quite steadily. And then when the film festival actually came around, it just like doubled with views from Moments website. So that was quite an obvious success one. Yeah, and definitely a, a kind of a special video for us because like being a finalist in, in that festival in the moment, uh, film festivals, a big deal for us. So the fact that the video that got us there kind of did well was, was like a, 
a double kind of... Um, whammy. Yeah, a double whammy. <laughs> we were just really pleased with that. And But, like, I, I mean, I think the big success with that was just knowing that we should submit something. Because, I mean, when we started in January, one of the first things I said, I was like, well, because we're starting our YouTube this year, we have to enter something to the Myth Festival. Um, so I think that's quite a quite an important one. Like, an idea for success for video is sort of knowing the right place and the right time for a video, and that was one of them. Yeah. Um, and then this, the second video that's kind of, that will within just a matter of days or week or something will overtake that video is the pushing the Mavic Mini the Mavic limits. Mini to its limits yeah that's that's done really well um it which is really great for us as well because it was a lot of work we messed up and filmed yeah. and refilmed so many times we lost yeah we basically lost some really kind of footage where there was some well, un unusable time, audio the first time we went out with the mavic mini which was bought maiden flight with the drone he didn't even know where the sport mode button was so, so he was testing yeah. the max speed he was like oh what can we get it to and no sports mode casper got back from from the water and he was like why were you going so slow and he was like, oh, you don't have sports mode. And he was like, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, do. you do. What do you think that button is? <laughs> yeah, so so basically... There was just a few hiccups and it ended yeah. up filming over like three months, I think. So the fact that then when we finally hit published and we were like, oh, thank God it's gone. And then it did well was just really special. <laughs> yeah. But, but again, I think that what we originally said about this kind of idea of viral source, also the ingredients sort of came together with this video and... The number one thing, and I think a major defining factor for our channel is definitely the humour. So we took uh, a review and what would be like a classic review structure and we added quite a lot of our sort of humour to it and kept it light-hearted and um, a little bit unusual. But also it kind of ended up being bang on with the timing of the rumours around the Mavic Mini 2. So the search volume really... And Prime Day as well. And Prime Day, yeah. So the search volume and people kind of wondering whether to buy it because it was on offer had actually really spiked. And, and so the timing was also really good. But that was completely unintentional. Like We had no idea that yeah. the day we published, the Mavic Mini was actually going to be on a $200 sale. sale. So everyone was messaging like, oh, we've bought one. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you timed that perfectly. And we were just like, that was, that was just That was just luck, yeah. <laughs> I, I love the, I don't think it's intentional by the sound of it, but for me, it really resonated with the like, Top Gear Grand Tour sort of videos um, where they go off across the across the world testing a car with kind of relatively arbitrary score system. That's amazing. That's amazing the, that you that you thought that and noticed that because that was actually our intention. That's exactly what we kind of uh, got inspiration from. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're obviously Jeremy Clarkson fans. Um, you can You can tell. <laughs> Honestly, we, we absolutely, yeah, it's so true. We absolutely love actually the Grand Tour um, and the kind of reason why we probably preferred the Grand Tour to uh, Top Gear actually is because of the cinematography because it had such an awesome, unique sort of cinematic look to it on, on Prime um, that we were completely hooked to it. But it's actually really funny though that you, you did notice it because we even filmed the original intro that was going to be for that video yeah. was basically like a, a Top Gear spin off. Yeah. Um, we can, uh, I can send it to you because yeah. it, I was so tempted to put it in, but then I was like, well, again, our viewership is American and they're just, I don't know if they'll find it as funny as like quite a cinematic. Um, yeah. fast paced hook at the beginning so we cut it because there was a bit of like in today's episode Sal gets blown away by the wind and you know that kind of yeah we'll have to send it to, to yeah. it was yeah awesome so we've talked about some of your um, best videos and the videos that haven't sort of banged quite as hard as you'd hoped um, have there been other sort of surprises during your journey so any sort of really high points or disastrous or disappointing points that you didn't really see coming with with doing YouTube that have taken you by surprise. I think definitely. I think there definitely has been. Yeah, it's there's no better way to describe our kind of adventure with YouTube so far than an absolute roller coaster. Um, one of the things that we found, which was completely unexpected, is uh, when you get in front of the camera, 
it's a very different feeling and it's a very different kind of vibe than if you're just even talking to, to a stranger or to someone just kind of um, you know off the cuff so even though we've always kind of got on really well basically we found that we were falling out and arguing when we were trying to film videos um, we were kind of like sometimes not on the same page sometimes um, struggling to, to kind of get on the same kind of vibe and that was completely unexpected because I mean we don't we don't really argue a lot at all. We'd never been in front of the camera though before at all um, before this January and like everything that we had in our head imagining all the videos that we were going to make and stuff we never actually imagined what it was going to be like actually talking to a camera so the moment we sat down in front of it and like yeah we are very jokey and um, banterful in our normal daily lives and the moment we sat down in yeah. front of the camera it was just like it Silence. It often like, just got really kind of stiff we like, and, oh no, and tense, wasn't it? It's, it's just so different and like, yeah, you just can't, unless you've tried it and done it, you just can't even imagine like how weird it is. Yeah, so that was one of the things and as a result of that, a lot of the kind of process with some of our, well, well with a lot of our earlier videos was almost quite well, difficult because we'd sometimes fall out on the set and then we'd struggle to kind of finish it up or then there would be like long hours that Sal would spend editing it and we'd have other projects to do so there was kind of time pressure so then we were getting frustrated and by the time we were kind of ready to upload we were so fed up with it that the kind of excitement had gone but then once we clicked publish we'd get a few nice comments or some good feedback and all of a sudden we're like up for it again and we were motivated so it was really really like up and down and within a matter of two days we were like oh my god this youtube thing is gonna blow you know we're so <laughs> buzzing for it and then like we're never touching youtube again like maybe we should pack this in and it was really some extremities. Yeah, definitely. And like, yeah, it's, it's so hard to even describe. Let me find yeah. the words for it. But with, I mean, the most recent big win that I can kind of talk about because it's still so fresh is this Mavic Mini video. I mean, we were not expecting it to do so well and to get so much kind of good feedback from it. And it really does motivate you to, to carry on and the the work and reward what do you call it the work uh, reward ratio yeah it's just so valuable and like fast like if you yeah. put work in and you get that equal amount of reward out and like we haven't found that with a lot of stuff that we've kind of done so far with just even working for clients um, the reward isn't always equal to what you put in, especially when it's for clients and it's just for money. Yeah, whereas with YouTube, it's, it has been good f for us in that way. Yeah, it's felt amazing to, to create and then get such great feedback, but also just be really happy w with ourselves, like, and yeah. how we're creating, how we're working and how we're developing. Like, yeah, it's a very rewarding process. process. Um, the, big, the biggest surprise, though, surely, of our whole YouTube thing was the moment film festival yeah, yeah I think it's got to be yeah that was again that that kind of reward thing like we'd really push to come up with this unique idea and submit even though like life was crazy at the beginning of lockdown and stuff and we had no idea what was going to happen and we couldn't even leave it was quite strict here in Poland um with the police lockdown, and, yeah. and lockdown and everything so like we really pushed through that and worked through it and I mean it was mentally very tough at the time um, but we did it and then to, to get that reward of yeah, actually that... becoming a finalist that was crazy and that was all thanks to YouTube because like I said earlier like we would never have made that I don't think if we'd have ha not had a YouTube That's what motivated to, us, to put yeah. it on so yeah. yeah but there's been there's been even more like rewarding things that have happened like crazy things that I just couldn't even imagine back in January that have happened, but unfortunately, like, can't even. Yeah, we can't. Mention. We can't mention some of them, unfortunately, <laughs> but because they're not official yet. But they'll come to light. So. They, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think I think you're right. It's um, it becomes so personal when you're working for a client. They're paying you, and it's kind of personal, but it's about getting paid. I think when, as soon as there's no money on the table, um, it's it's just super personal, and I can doing it as a couple. I've got. I've got no idea how you are still talking. <laughs> I think me, I think me and my wife would, um, yeah, we're, we're better in separate rooms when I'm working on this project. 
No, I get that. That's, that, that. Like Bart said, that's something that's completely shocked us because, I mean, we worked before creatively together with Trio making videos for clients and we never came in to the, came to the clashes yeah. that we have done with the YouTube because no, no. the pressure of, like I said, being in front of camera and also, like, because of how we are and how we want to be, this it, like we want to be very natural in how we are together in real life. We want to be like that on camera. As like we're not actors, we we couldn't fake that. No, so no. then when you get in front of a camera, but you and you have to be concise and get information across well. Pair that with humor. Pair that with being natural. Pair that with not taking all day because you know you've actually like YouTube at the moment is not bringing it in any money. So like this is just still a hobby and like side project for us. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's to very tough. Like, I never in a million years imagined that YouTube would be this tough. But I never also imagined that it would be this rewarding. So, um, so imagine if uh, you wake up tomorrow and there's been a glitch and your channel's been wiped um, and you had to sit down and maybe work out what your first, I don't know, five or three videos are going to be. Like, you, you're hyped, you want to get back to it, you want to go straight back in. I genuinely have this fear, though. Like, every day, <laughs> every day I have this recurring nightmare that this is going to happen and I'm like, no, please don't. But um, It's a good question. Yeah. It's a really good question. I think, I think we would, as, as our number one video, we would still stick with what we did originally and we're kind of um, really pleased that we made a video that was in this kind of hello world, you know, hello YouTube, um, introducing ourselves, introducing why we started a channel and what we're kind of hoping to achieve. Um, so I think that would be still number one, but... That gave us like, it seems like a really basic and obvious video, but that actually gave our channel a huge boost that we were never even expecting straight away because everyone who'd practically ever met us was like, Wow, like what, Who are, the, what are you what, doing what, this for? What are yeah. these guys doing? That's so that's so weird. So they watched it and I mean for our first video that got I think a thousand views yeah. like quite quickly and we were just like, Oh, there's potential. Yeah, and people were uh, quite a few people messaged us and said, Oh, like that's ace that you're starting a YouTube, like why are you starting a you know, a YouTube and a lot of people interacted with us about that and, and gave us a little bit of a foundation of Kind of like, oh, okay, well, maybe there's a few people, you know, people maybe we went to school with or some members of our family that we don't keep in touch with that were really interested to see what we were doing. So that gave us kind of a confidence boost, a good as well. start. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other ones, the next two, I would, I would just say that we would be creating the same stuff that we are now. Like we would just go in probably with our next video that we've got got planned. I guess, yeah. And I, I think one thing that I would maybe say that I'd focus a little bit on, especially um, early on, and it's something that I'm kind of keeping in mind, well, we're keeping in mind as we're going, is it's really good to create content where you, you've taken the time to create something useful for other people. So anything like... How to. How to's or reviews are really valuable, especially at the beginning, because people less so have built up a relationship or an affinity to you as a person, but if they see something where you're being helpful and you're kind of giving your time up to assist or, or help or explain something, I think that's what builds up that relationship early on. So maybe that would be something we tend towards. Yeah, like I would, we didn't do this before when we started and I, I wouldn't do it again, but that's like, going in immediately with like vlog style content because as, as great as that is and how and it may work for some people I think it's very hard for you to engage people well enough straight away when they have no reason to know you and like you yet to watch a video of you going about your but, daily life yeah. unless you're doing something absolutely crazy that people are like dying to watch and you've got a great title and whatnot then fine but like just in terms of normal daily life, I wouldn't go in with something like that. I think that's reserved for when. A little bit later down the line. Yeah, maybe. people maybe like you <laughs> and, and know that, that, that they want to watch you doing stuff. Um, but yeah, I think we would just do our normal content. I mean, if it wasn't 2020, we'd maybe I've travel somewhere. A bit, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, you have to adapt, adapt and overcome. It sounds like you have adapted. I mean, you start your plan to start this channel was borderline a travel channel. Um, 
from what you're saying, it turned into something quite different. And that's a you know, really nice little, um, what's the word, pivot. Um, and yeah, it sounds like you guys have, have become pretty, pretty aware of your audience and what's working for you pretty quickly, which is really cool. And that's just showing your numbers. I mean, you've, you're, you're about to hit a thousand subs um, relatively quickly, which is, which is super exciting. Yeah, I mean, we're, I, I can't tell you how excited we are to, to hit a thousand subs and it's a big milestone. It's like a big little milestone kind of thing where, um, I mean, we sort of had this goal, um, which was a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. So basically by the 31st of December, we're aiming for a thousand subs. And the only reason we kind of went for what I think is quite an ambitious goal is because obviously we had been working in video for a number of years before, so we kind of we we set ourselves quite a high bar. Um, but yeah, it's... because the, the the YouTube is a crazy tough thing, but we'd kind of already got the video part figured out, not perfectly by any means, but I mean like we knew enough to be able to create a video, and we know like somewhat how to tell stories. Um, so we feel like that we had that part yeah the, well learned. the huge learning curve and the biggest difficulty was to learn that youtube specific side of things because that was literally like black magic to us at the beginning we were really kind of uh lost and i mean the whole even titles even, thumbnails wow but i mean even like editing a youtube is so much different to editing a client video even in terms of story like I remember the first few videos that that we made they took me like almost a week to edit and I'm not a slow editor or anything yeah. like but trying to perfect these videos when you've never done it before and make um, yeah we were getting feedback oh, from people and trying to kind of make them keep the flow because you have, you've got to keep people interested so that is such a big priority on YouTube so keeping that flow the tempo right and especially it, like nowadays with just how social media is and um, well mainly just how social media is people's attention spans aren't that long so with YouTube you have to have tactics to keep people engaged and with the story and the little punch-ins. Yeah, and, even yeah. a simple thing is the, the punch-ins. I used to hate watching them when people went crazy on the punch-in of the video, but I learned very quickly that it was, a, it was a tactic to change up the frame without cutting to some B-roll, for example, to keep people like, oh, okay, something new's happened, rather than just staring at, at faces. And do this, learning stuff like that is, yeah. Makes a big difference, I think. Yeah. Cool. You know that I'm going to do punch-ins on your faces when you say that, right? Yeah, I knew it. I, I imagined it in my head. I was like, that's going to zoom right into my face. <laughs> Guys, this has been super fun. Thank you so much for being uh, first up. Um, amazing start. I think there's been a lot in here, which um, I think a lot of people can learn a lot from. Um, and hopefully they'll come and watch me with your videos as well. Thank you so much, Tim, yeah. again for the invite and for, for having us on. It's honestly such a pleasure and an, a, a really big honour for, for you to think that, you know, we've got something, something, to say. something to say and something to offer. So thank you so much for having us on. Um, where can people find you? Not, not, not literally, I mean, like online. So we're on all the major social media platforms. Uh, we've got Facebook and Instagram at Trio Stories Photography um, and Twitter, the Twitter, Twitter queen. Just a trio stories. At trio stories and of course our YouTube, which is just youtube.com slash trio stories and you'll be able to find us there. Guys, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and if you're still watching, thank you so much for still watching. Uh, hit like so that we know that you like us and hit subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, twice a week, it's tips, tricks for video and photography and hopefully some more videos like this. Um, thanks guys. See ya.